Thoughts, I mean, yeah, you don't really have to say much about Terrell Suggs. You know that he's a threat on every play. You always have to be mindful of where he's at, but also the other two guys up Shaw and Jamuro, those guys too. Great pass rushers, great outside linebackers in that system. So we're definitely aware of, of where, they at, uh, where they're at at all times. Is it a challenge for this? I mean, you guys have had success running the ball. Does their front, will that be a challenge for you guys with that zone scheme? And I know the test is he. Kyle's scheme is working still. Sure, I think. I mean, it's always an it's always a test in this league. I think, especially when you put stuff out on film, people are going to try to take away what works. And, and obviously, you know, you have the guys I just mentioned, plus Lodinata, um, Canty, those types of guys that are going to try to make it hard for us to run the ball. And, and I think our schemes are, are prepared for that. But it is going to be a challenge. And you know, we'll really see where we're at uh, when we go out and play this game. Hey Brian, I know you've always got to be, you've got always got to produce, and there's always going to be pressure, but is there a little bit of an off in that it's a little deeper into the season now? You've got to win under your belt, and things have come together a little bit better on offense? Uh, no, not at all. I think I've had that same mentality all along. You know, I've told you guys before, Coach Ped and Kyle and Dow, they've all sat me down and said, look, just go out and play. Don't worry about anything else. And, and like I said, I trust those guys, and you know, I take them for their word and go out and play. And that makes it easy on me. How about with Jordan Cameron being back out there, at least on a limited sure. basis today? That's great. I think obviously Jordan's a huge part of this offense. Um, as you guys see, you know, I, I, I asked for his locker to be next to mine. We talk on a daily basis, so um, he is such a big part. And, and having him back out there, at least in a limited, you know, we'll see how it goes the rest of the week. But he looked pretty good out there. In your games last season, you guys really had a lot of production. I mean, Jordan, mm -hmm. what? What's behind that connection? I mean, what 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 made that click for you? Just uh, it makes it easy suddenly. when you have a big target yeah. who's you know very uh, you know talented. I think you know it's easy to find a guy like that. I think a lot of it is throughout the progression, and you know even going back to last year, I think you know the tight end was very important in the offense, and same thing now this year. So it helps when you got a guy who's a Pro Bowl caliber player. I think you know that that makes it easy. He said that even though he made the Pro Bowl, he just talked to us. He said he, he said you know he doesn't think he's arrived. Do you see that kind of motivation and hunger in him? To yeah, no doubt. I think that, that my favorite thing about Jordan is he's always always working. He's always trying to get better. He's every time we look over, he's over there with Coach Angelico working on something. And, and when you have talent and you have that type of work ethic, I think the sky's the limit. So yeah, he had a great year last year. But I think you know, like he said, you know, I know what he's capable of. He knows what he's capable of. And I think you know, we're excited to see where, where we get with that. Have you watched Joe Flacco a lot over the years? And um, I know Joe personally because we share agents, so you know I've known him for a while. So obviously a great quarterback. Anyone who can win the Super Bowl, that run that he had in the playoffs a few years back was unbelievable. So he's he's an impressive quarterback. Brian, when you watch those two uh, 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 Ravens games, the Ravens and the Bengals and Steelers, do they play much better in, uh, in uh, against the Steelers, or was it just uh, what, what was the difference in them defense? Yeah, I think, um, you know, when you watch the two films, there are some differences, but I think for the most part, it's just execution, and, and I don't know, I'm not sure what they said about it, but, you know, sometimes a game just gets away from you, and I think, you know, you watch that Steelers film, and you look at the Ravens, and it's exactly what you expect from them. I don't know if you heard, but yesterday, Harbaugh said, why well, the best quarterback they've had there in a while. How, how did you respond? I haven't heard about that, so I, I, that's a nice compliment, but I got a long way to go. Yeah, but we talked a lot about the Steelers rivalry in week one. Do you guys feel the same about Baltimore? I mean, there's a lot of history, obviously, here with them. And yeah, there's probably many, not many other guys on this team that know about that history. I think um, just like we talked about with the Steelers, you know, none of that history counts going into this game. The only thing that counts is our week of preparation and how the game is played on Sunday. Obviously, me being from here, you know, I know that's the long grounds. I don't know how many, so many people know that here, but, um, you know, like I said, it doesn't matter. I mean, we hit, we went out, had a great day today. We got to continue to build on that. And when, once the you know you're playing the game, you're not thinking of the history between the two organizations. Are you even still though, down? Uh, you know their history and their Clevelanders. It is the first time you're playing. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I've been on teams I've played it before. Yeah. yeah. But do you approach? I mean, does it feel like being a rookie and playing a team for the first time? Um, not really, because I, I do have experience. You know, when I was in New England, I think we played him every year. We played him twice one year, once in the regular season, once in the playoffs. Obviously, when I was here last year, I, the, the first time we played him, I was on the field. Second time, I had already been hurt. But, you know, there's a familiarity with, with um, their players, their schemes, that type of thing. And like I said, you just put the work in during the week, and that's really what you go into during the game. I mean, yeah, it might be nice to have played a team before, but, you know, it's not something I'm concerned about. When you look back to, you know, that last game and Stadium. Mm -hmm. 
Baltimore Ravens? Sure. I mean, do we still have sort of painful memories from, from that? I just remember being scared at the game because of the, you know, people ripping out the benches, the, the atmosphere. I remember they can only play in one end zone of the, of the field because the dog was so crazy. So um, that's pretty much my extent of that memory. And Brian, I think, and we've asked you about Josh before, but it looks like he's going to be allowed back in the building possibly as early as tomorrow. What, how helpful would it be for him to be back around you guys and be able to work out here and maybe go to some meetings? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously Josh, you know, we saw what he did last year. We saw how, he, how big of a playmaker he is and, and what his potential is. So, you know, we'll see how it plays out. I'm not really concerned about it. I've told you guys, I'm worried about the guys in this room. But to get Josh back around would obviously be great for us. Hey, Brian, could you talk about your receivers and how, that they, and how they've stepped up in the, in the first two weeks? Kind of, you talked on Monday about how you've been overlooked, sure. and to a degree they have as well. Yeah. Just touch on what you've gotten from those guys and how big they've been. Yeah, I mean, I, I love all of those guys just because their mentality is to come out and work and, and get as you know much better every day as they can, and, and you know they work really hard at learning the scheme. I mean, it's not easy. We're, we're moving those guys around. It, it's, it's it can be difficult, and each and every one of them studies their butt off. You know, they went out and they got there and practiced really hard, and you know when you have that, you have a lot of trust in those guys because you know they know what they're supposed to do and they're going to do it 120 percent. So um, you know as far as the past two weeks, I think all of them have caught balls. They've all stepped up at big times, and and like I said, I have confidence in all of them, which makes it easy for me because I just go through my progression and, and try to find the open guy. Do you feel like you and Miles have kind of arrived at a nice place? I mean, it seemed like it t- took a little while to get sure. your <coughs> together, but do, do you feel like you're getting there? I think things are going well. I think we're always continuing to, to try to improve, and not just with Miles, but all those guys. And you know, it goes on a week-to-week basic basis now, where it's more game planning. You're not. You know, you may run one play one week, and then you might not run it again for a few more weeks. So now you kind of get to refine things a little bit and really focus on the game plan. On your connection with uh, Hawkins, have you uh, literally changed uh, a little bit of thinking about throwing to a five foot seven guy? Maybe early on, maybe you're just throwing the ball to a guy, but now you realize that you have to uh, throw it a little bit lower. No, I think I mean that it just comes with knowing who your receiver is. I mean, obviously Miles and and Hawk are a little bit different in stature, but. The more you repetition you get with guys and how they run certain routes and where you can place the ball, that obviously becomes more apparent. Yeah. There's a nice sort of, yeah, I mean, obviously he's off to a nice start. It looked seemed like he hit the ball in camp. He had, he had a great start and then uh, maybe dropped a couple of balls. Was he in a little wall that he had to recover from? No, I don't think so. I think you know just kind of the progression of training camp. You know things. You know rotations, things like that. I think Hawk has always been very consistent, and, and that's what I've admi- admired about him most ever since he first got here is the one thing you know you're going to get from Hawk is 120% effort. He's going to give it all he has, whether he knows he's getting the ball or not, and he's going to go, and he's going to know exactly where he's supposed to be, and then you know, it kind of just comes together as you go along, and, and like you said, it's, it's been looking pretty good the past two weeks. Pettin said the other day that you know his big message was you know, we've got to handle success well. Mm-hmm. Obviously, had a lot in New England, you know, that whole culture. What did you learn about it there, and how's it going to help you in this situation? Yeah, sometimes when you had a win there, it felt like a loss. So, um, you know, I think you kind of have to have that mentality. You have to, yeah, we won the game, but what can we do to become better? I think, you know, it's such a long season. You know, we're only two games in, and, yeah, it was a great win, but you really just have to move on and, and realize that, you know, the best teams in this league, they get better week after week after week, and they really hit their peak towards the end of the season. I think that's the biggest thing. That I took, you know, from my time in New England, is as a team we continue to get better, and better, and you want to hit that peak, you know, November, December, so you're making, you know, a push at the end of the season to get yourself where you want to be. So I think, you know, our team has, has done a good job. We've moved on. We had a great day today at practice, and, and that's what the mentality has to be. Do you remember like your dad being crushed when the team moved, and did you root for somebody else during those years? No, I never years? did. Yeah, I, I don't remember, you know, his specific feelings. I just remember as a kid. The only thing I ever knew was going to the Browns game on Sundays, and all of a sudden it's gone. So, yeah, I think I was just like everybody else in the city. It was, it was heartbreaking. And when they won, you know, Super Bowl, I mean, was it like you didn't? Want no, to- I didn't even follow football so much anymore. I really didn't. You know, it wasn't a part of my life. So I, I don't think I felt that as much as maybe some of the older generation who thought that should have been us. You know, so I, I didn't think about it that way. Right, thanks, thanks, Brian.